Is this thing on? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Spider-Man. How are you? Um, uh, I'm fine. Listen, I have a question. Well, okay, shoot. Um, am I a pussy? No, Spider-Man, you're not a pussy. That's just how dreamy doe I Toby Maguire plays you. Oh, how do you know? Well, I just came back from watching the first Spider-Man movie. Really? How was it? Um, it was entertaining. So what you're saying is, it sucked. No, it didn't suck. I mean, it's just not as good as the second one. Well, why is that? Because I feel like the movie is very uneven, you know, there's there's some part there are some parts of it that are very good but other parts that are not so good. Also they don't do much to explain certain things like for instance Venom just the symbiote just drops out of the sky and they never really explain anything about it except for the fact that it is a symbiote. Also Sandman Flint Marco gets the powers of Sandman and they never explain how or why it happened or how they could fight it. So I think there should have been a lot more science in this movie. Well not well obviously they can be very scientific about it because it's not scientific sound there's not there's not anything scientifically sound about a comic book based movie. And yet they really took for they really took suspension of disbelief about as far as they could take it because you know you just have to go with it. But I think they should have put in a little bit more effort when it came to explaining certain things. You know, for those people who don't really know. I mean, Venom is not even ever referred to as Venom in the movie. Um, also, there's the movie just doesn't flow as well as the second one because it feels kind of like four chunks of a story being tied together, but n they don't do a very good job of tying the movie together because the only thing that really ties it together is Spider-Man, but not everybody likes Spider-Man like as much as I do, so they really needed something like in Spider-Man 2 when you have the plot which would uh, eventually lead to the destruction of New York City and that's what Spider-Man has to prevent, but in this movie there's no such big huge fr huge risk, it's just Spider-Man being uh, hunted down by th these three people, so all they care about is Spider-Man, so nobody else is really put in danger, there's really no, no sense of danger in this movie. So, I don't get to kick ass? Well, yeah, you do get to kick ass, I mean, in fact, I think the action scenes are great. They're, they're even better than those in the previous movies, and Tobey Maguire p puts a lot more effort into the action scenes, you know, you get to see his face a lot more, and then he, uh, he dances and he cries. He dances and he cries? Oh, so I'm not a pussy, I'm just a faggot. No, 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 shame on you, Spider-Man, you shouldn't use such language. No, you're not a faggot, in fact, you suffer a lot for it, you're women, you know? But, when it comes to Tobey Maguire now, although I really like the fact that he got more involved in the movie and you get to see his face more, I do think that his acting, much like the movie, is uneven because at certain points he was supposed to show a little more emotion. Like, there's this scene where Mary Jane is dumping him. Mary Jane dumps me, but she's a fine piece of ass! Yeah, I know she's a fine piece of ass. <laughs> yeah, but she dumps you and you're just sitting there and taking it like, you know, you're in a restaurant, a fancy restaurant, and she's going on and on, blah, 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 about what she needs, and, you know, and you just sit there. And the whole scene feels like, blink if you can't hear me, dude. Uh, and yeah, I hated that scene, and I hated most of the scenes that involved uh, Toby Maguire and Kristen Dunn getting emotional on each other. So... We have bad acting, a bad story. I didn't say it was a bad story, I just didn't, didn't flow very right. I mean, I still really like Sam Raimi and like all the little Sam Raimi-esque touches there are in the movie and the Bruce Campbell cameo was great and J. Jonah Jameson was as usual hilarious, as usual hilarious but I just didn't, don't like the fact, oh, I'm, my favorite character in the movie has to be the new goblin because James Franco did a great job and especially in the action, action sequences because the first action sequence which happens to involve the new goblin in Spider-Man is in my opinion the best one because uh, it involves acrobatics and stuff and uh, you know you're both jumping around and you're punching each other and hitting the buildings and that and at the end poof you pull out the web and the guy slams his neck on the web and then falls to the ground and boom he's out that was a great element it was such a simplistic end to the scene whereas the last 
fighting sequence with Venom was in my opinion horrible because it was underwhelming because the whole movie you expect a Venom action, a Venom fight scene and the last fight scene with Venom is deplorable there's no sense of drama to it and in fact I think Venom pretty much was like the movie version of Venom was the movie version of Phoenix there just for the sake of being there not really having any character development or any importance whatsoever to the movie but all but the, all the other little elements you know all the the personal drama and the new goblin and you know all those other little touches and Stanley and Bruce Campbell pretty much make up for Venom so yeah I can say that I really like the movie and I think I'm going to see it again I think I'm going to see it again okay well, will you take me next time <laughs> well why would you need to see your own movie well I, I understand I get hooked up with a blonde. Well, I get hooked up with a blonde, but you think blondes are so much fun? You know, you should try a brown hair girl. Oh, okay. Aw, thank you.